this case is the seminal case in New Jersey. And what it basically and fundamentally says is we will not allow public boards of education to have policies that allow for segregation in schools. The Hedgepeth-Williams case begins in, in 1943 with Janet Hedgepeth, who was a 12-year-old African-American girl um, who lived in the Carol Robbins Elementary catchment. And um, she attended the elementary school there together with her white neighbors. And then when it came to the middle school assignment, she was assigned to the Lincoln School which was the segregated all black school. Now it's the Rivera School. Um, and uh, it was at that point that uh, her family, the, the Hedgepeth family decided to ask the superintendent, you know, why this assignment was being made. The superintendent was Paul Lelouchier uh, at the time. There was also another student in the same neighborhood, Leon Williams, uh, another black student who received the same assignment to the Lincoln School. So Trenton was kind of unique in this, in this period in the 1940s in the sense that uh, seg the schools were segregated only at the middle school level. It's kind of a classic Jim Crow situation where the intentional installation of like a modern infrastructure, in this case, middle school education. Sometimes it was like a streetcar in the 1890s or a movie theater, you know, in the 1920s. But the invention of these new kinds of institutions uh, came along with a demand for a new kind of segregation. So just to state the obvious, you didn't need to have racial segregation, no matter how racist you were in a movie theater, if you didn't have a movie theater. The plaintiffs were the two mothers they sought legal advice and assistance from the NAACP, a local lawyer, and he filed suit and the New Jersey Supreme Court uh, issued a decision on January 31st, 1944, that was very short and very to the point. And it says, no, you cannot uh, discriminate against these children based on race. And they absolutely rendered a brief decision, but it was, it was, you know, um, decisive. And it, it, it essentially uh, set the tone for uh, other cases that we've come to know, including Brown, for how to litigate those cases. Efforts to eliminate discrimination, overcome biases, and, more, and move to a more inclusive environment has definitely been in the national conversation as of late. Cases like these, it's very important to know and learn about landmark cases such as the Hedgepeth Williams case of 1944 because it gives us a timeline and a framework um, for advancing towards a more inclusive society. The Hedgepeth Williams case preceded the Brown versus Board of Education case. Uh, then NAACP attorney Thurgood Marshall actually looked to the Hedgepeth Williams case as guidance when looking for precedences for arguing Brown versus Board of Education. So these two monumental cases are very important when we talk about advancing anti-discrimination in our schools, and they alleviated overt segregation in New Jersey schools and, of course, schools across the country. It goes without saying that it has had a remarkable effect on the laws uh, as we know them to be today. You know, not only in education, but certainly um, in um, discrimination, the law against discrimination. I, I don't think there's any real debate. I think it's well recognized uh, nationwide that New Jersey has among the strongest, among the best uh, laws against discrimination. And I have to believe that some of that started with, with this case. For one judge, one school program, our judges go out into the schools and in the classrooms in their local areas to teach children about the courts and the law. Over the years, our judges have also per 
pre presented various um, presentations to our students on law related topics and other things. Uh, this allows our students to gain insight not only into the role of the courts in society, but how various laws and policies shape and impact our everyday lives. That's very important. So teaching the children about the Hedgepark-Williams case um, will allow the students to think deeply about how far we've come in combating discrimination and segregation and how far we still have to go um, in, our, in, our, in our schools and in our communities.